The purpose of the Family Finder test at Family Tree DNA is to help connect you to other cousins and help you explore your origins and hopefully help you find missing ancestors. But the table of information can be a little bit tricky to understand, so let's go over it together. This is 5 Minutes with your DNA guide, Diane Southard. When you first log into Family Tree DNA, you're going to arrive at your dashboard. And since we're here to look at the Family Finder results, you'll want to click on Family Finder Matches right there in your dashboard. That's going to launch you into the Family Finder results page, and it will default to see the detail view. Now, I don't really like the detail view. I think it's maybe too much to look at at once, so I always switch to the table view. And I feel like this is just easier to understand and look at. So in the table view, what you'll want to pay attention to is information that your match has entered themselves versus information that's generated by Family Tree DNA. So let's take a closer look. So on the very left, you'll see name and ancestral surnames. These are both entered by your DNA match and they can write whatever they want to write. You'll also see on the right is a little tree icon. And if the tree icon is dark or filled in, that means your match has posted a family tree, which everyone should do to make it easier for all of us to figure out how we're related to each other. I guess I should move myself away so you can see my cute little tree icon. There you go. So make sure you're posting your own family tree as well. Then we see in the middle, we have information that's been generated by family tree DNA. So initially, they're going to give you an estimate of your relationship. And there's a lot of different relationships in here that may work for you. But they also give you a couple of tools to help you figure out what your relationship might be. The first is this column called shared DNA. This is the total amount of DNA you're sharing with someone else. In general, the more you share, the more you care right? You also are given xDNA information. So xDNA has a very unique inheritance pattern. And I really encourage you to go out and watch my YouTube video on xDNA to learn more how to use this to figure out how you're related to other people. They also share with you a, a longest block, they call it. it. It's the size of the biggest piece of DNA that you share. And that longest block can be significant. For example, if we look at these two matches, they're sharing about the same total amount of DNA with me, 60 and 61. But you can see their longest block is pretty different. One sharing 26 and the other 41. So really looking at the longest block just helps you prioritize which matches you might want to look at first. In general, you want to look at matches with bigger pieces of shared DNA. But hands down, far and away, the best tool that you'll want to research with is this tool that you can access by clicking on those little uh, two-person icons that are right next to each other. This is their shared matches tool. That's what it's called at other companies. Here they call it in common with. So you can see right here it says in common with or not in common with. So you'll want to make sure you're using this tool to gather groups of matches together. And oftentimes that can help you determine how you're related to other people. Once you decide how you're related to someone else, Family Tree DNA gives you a way to document your relationship. So that's what it means right here when it says assign relationship. It means if you figured out how you're related to your cousin John, you can click on assign relationship and it will help you make that determination. So I've gone through this process for my match Miss K and I wanna show you how it works. So essentially, once I've determined that she's my first cousin, that's when these little maternal or paternal icons will show up depending on our relationship. Relationship. Of course, this is very dependent on you having a family tree posted in the Family Tree DNA platform. So you can go back to your dashboard and add your family tree to your, to your account so that you can link these matches. It's, it's really powerful. So you can just click on your family tree once it's loaded, and then there's a little uh, link DNA matches icon at the top. So you can click on that. And then essentially you'll just navigate to the name of your DNA match that's in your tree. So that's the key, right? You have to add your DNA match into your tree. Then you click on this link tree button. You choose Miss K from your match list, right? And you link her to her position on your tree. So it's a pretty straightforward system and you can do it with any DNA match that you want to. But if you want those little maternal paternal icons to appear, you'll have to link 
a match with a certain status, meaning you have to link a parent, aunt, uncle, first cousin, grandparents, grand aunts or uncles, or sometimes first cousins, that those people will help you activate those little maternal, paternal icons. You can still, and I highly encourage you to link other matches, your second cousins or third cousins, but they just won't activate this family matching tool that they have at Family Tree DNA. But all in all, this is a great way to remind yourself of discoveries you've already made by assigning these relationships relationships and linking these individuals to your family tree. So what should you do from here? Well, I'd like you to just go in and start playing with your family tree DNA match page, review your longest block, try the in common with tool, and make sure you add a tree and link a couple people to your tree so you can get familiar with that process. I really think it helps. So until next time, my name is Diane Southard and I am your DNA guide.